Hi, whenever we talk about random forest, we always mention something called as out of the bag error or OOB score. What is it exactly? And why do we say that only 64% of my data is actually used in training? In this example, I'll show you how OOB score is calculated and how only 64% of your data in random forest is utilized for training and the remaining 36% can be utilized for validation. So stay tuned. All of us have seen the score called as OOB score in bagging classifiers as well as random forest. What does it exactly do? How is it equivalent to the validation set? I'll prove you with equations and derivations on how the validation set when you set OOB score equal to true is 36%. Let's say probability of selecting a row as a bootstrap sample is 1 by n, where n is the total number of rows. If I have 10,000 rows, then the probability of selecting that one row, say for example row number 431, into a bootstrap sample is 1 by 10,000. Okay. Probability of this row being not selected is 1 minus 1 by n. Now, as we know, the bootstrap samples are selected with replacement. So the probability of this row, which is say 4, 431, not being selected in n draws is 1 minus 1 by n to the power n. I again repeat, I want to find out the probability of not selecting a row entirely while creating a bootstrap sample. So for the first draw, if I select one particular row, the probability of it being selected is 1 by n where n is the number of rows you have in hand. The probability of it not being selected is 1 minus 1 by n. If you take this trial independently for n times, then the probability of that row being not selected in n trials is 1 minus 1 by n raised to power n. As n tends to infinity, what is the value of the limit? Or essentially, what is the probability of not selecting a sample at all in any draw while creating a bootstrap sample? Let's go to the derivation part. I again write the equation. I want to find limit n tends to infinity 1 minus 1 by n to the power n. This is the limit that I want to find out. I can smartly convert this into limit n tends to infinity 1 plus minus 1 by n to the power n. I substitute y as minus 1 by n. So if y is substituted as minus 1 by n, my limit would change. So from n equal to infinity to now the new limit would become y tending to 0 and this equation would become 1 plus y to the power 1 by y and I have to calculate the y tending to 0 limit. Now playing around with this equality again. Now as we know x to the power n into m is equal to x to the power n raised to m. Okay. So limit y tends to 0 1 plus y raised to 1 by y again raised to minus 1 is what I have to compute the limit for. The next thing that I'll do is I'll equate y to be equal to x. So x is equal to limit y tending to 0 1 plus y upon 1 by y. Okay. 
I have still kept that minus one term as it is. So if you remember, you have minus one, but I'm computing the limit of this inner guy. Okay. I take log on both the sides, log to the base e. So I have ln of x equal to limit y tending to zero ln of 1 plus y raised to 1 by y ln of x will be equal to limit y tending to 0 1 by x as this guy comes here or 1 by y sorry ln 1 plus y as y tends to 0 ln of 1 plus y is 0 and y the denominator is also 0 so you have a 0 by 0 limit now wherein you can differentiate the numerator and differentiate the denominator so what I can do is I can say d by dy of the numerator which is equal to d by dy of ln 1 plus y divided by d by dy of the denominator which is equal to d by dy of y the differentiation of ln 1 plus y with respect to y is 1 upon 1 plus y and this term is 1 now when you apply limit y tending to 0 if this is 0 this equation becomes 1 upon 1 plus 0 which is equal to 1 Okay. So you're left with ln x equal to 1. That simply means x is equal to e to the power 1. If you remember, we had safeguarded the minus 1 as well. So the probability of not selecting a sample in n trials is basically e to the power minus 1, which is 0.36 out of 100 samples you will have 36 samples not being selected for training that is where you can smartly use those unused samples for your validation that is what your OOB score tells you if you set it to true your training will happen on the 64 training points and the 36 can be used for validation this is where you can use the OOB score to validate how good your model is trained if you do have any questions with what we've covered today then please feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. If you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone whom you think would find them useful. Be sure to subscribe for future videos. And thank you all for watching.